and welcome to Model Kit Stuff and part 7 of our First World War U9 build by Dazworks. Um, and in this video we're going to be building up the conning tower. So we're on, um, I'm not sure if it's step or page 13, it's a slightly weird uh, way they, they number the, the instructions. Um, every other one doesn't get a number. Um, anyway, um, so we're basically on this section here doing some um, some of the fittings. You'll notice I've got my instructions in a in a folder with sleeves in, which is actually something I saw on Oscale Modeling's channel. Um, if you've not been and looked at his channel, then then do so. He he builds ships. Um, he builds ships only. Um, and a, a bit of Star Wars stuff in fairness to him. So ships or spaceships. So anything with a ship in it. Um, uh, <laughs> and he built them at an incredible rate, uh, particularly as he's, he's a self-confessed um, newbie to the hobby. Um, but yeah, uh, it's quite interesting watching how he works and, and, and how he learns and goes through that process. So it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a really lovely... Um, lovely channel to follow actually um, but this was something I saw him do and I thought actually that's a really good idea so um, I've now done that and this has the instructions in for my U9 and it also has instructions in for my Arizona um, so yeah thanks for that idea Mr Oscale Modeling right then let's have a look at this bad boy so I need to start by digging out the parts. Some of these parts have already been um, um, removed, or at least one of them has already been removed from the sprue. Um, so I just need to locate that. As you can see, what I do with my parts as I paint them, um, and I paint them on the sprue if I can, is I'm then putting them in these little tubs um, with a bit of tissue paper um, just to stop them getting scratched or damaged. So this is all bow planes and bits, I think. Yeah, so it'll be in this one. So we have done some small bits and got them completed. So we've got the machine gun tripods there, which are part painted, and the little horseshoe life preservers painted waiting for the, the decals. Uh, let me find the parts. Okay so I'm just test fitting all the parts that we need for this and what I'm finding is I've got a, a, a variation between very tight snug fit and too tight a fit and that's probably because there's not an allowance there for the for the paint on the part, so just take these off. Um, so the mast here fits quite snugly, um, so there's no problems there. This back thingy magic, whatever that is. That fit is very tight and I'm going to actually loosen that a little bit, just scrape the paint out of the inside. The hatch fits okay, um, but I'm going to scrape the paint off the inside of that just for the, for the glue. This part here doesn't fit, it won't fit in place, um, so I need to sand that down a little bit because it's just too tight a fit. And the deck, show you that, you can see it's bowing because the mounting point doesn't appear to be quite in the right place and I don't know whether that's just paint thickness or not but I think it isn't, I think it, it's just not quite in the right place and it's making that deck bow. Now if you're putting this on it's not visible but if you're putting the open version on without the tarpaulin on you would see that bow um, but you need to sort it out anyway so that's going to be my first job um, and I think what we'll do is we will 
just trim down the inside of that part and thin it out a little bit. Um, I've also noticed that this bracket here doesn't sit on the surface like it should. So we're going to clean up uh, and take a little bit of material off the top of that, I think, as well. Um, just scraping paint off at this stage to see if that improves the Okay, thing. so I've scraped the paint off um, underneath here. Um, and on this side, it nearly fits, but doesn't. And on this side, it nowhere near fits. So if I put, there's a little location lug at the front. If I put that in place and hold that down, you can see that's not remotely wanting to fit. Um, what I don't want to do at this stage is take paint off there. I thought I'd test fit this, but clearly I didn't. Um, there's two little location lugs here, and they are wider than the recesses that have been left for them to fit into, um, and that's what's causing the problem. So I'm going to trim away underneath here because I can touch that up and it's not going to be as visible as touching up on the conning tower. So I'm going to go and do that. Okay, I've now got that fitting. Um, that goes together much nicer now. And all I've really done is thin down these lugs here. Um, so there's a little recess in them and I've trimmed away the inner part of the thick wall so that it's level with the thinner bit of the wall. When you look at the part, you'll understand what I'm saying um, and that just makes it fit so basically the location slot in these two parts is not um, sufficient in, in width to allow the location lugs to go in so you're either trimming these lugs down before you paint or you're amending this um, but yeah that just drops into place now so um, the location of everything is okay I thought maybe it, the location was wrong it was just the thickness of the mating parts that was an issue. So whilst the paint's drying on my parts for the conning tower um, I've decided to put the, the decals on. Um, so the decal shout out is on the same page as the um, paint guide. So you've got an option depending on which submarine you want to do um, to do um, 9, 10, 11 or 12 and, and that's clear um, it says alternate style here so it's not really clear unless you, you look for a moment but there's two different styles of 9 so there's this one here which is decal number 2 and this one here that's decal number 1 so um, after a moment uh, that dawns on you um, then you've got Decal number 13, which is the depth marks, and there's decal number 14, which is which are identical depth marks to that, which are actually probably a bit long, and then there's some shorter depth marks on the decal sheet that aren't called for here. Um, then you've got a smaller number which you can just about see there I'll show you which is on the decal sheet which is printed on here but they've not referenced it as a decal to put on so you could miss that if you're not careful so what I've actually done is um, I've gone with the number one style of nine because it looks a little bit more First World War. Um, have you? I have used the smaller decal because I'd already seen it in reference photographs. I've used number thirteen in the place where they suggest, and I've used the shorter one on the stern, which made more sense to me. Then there's um, two different types of decal for the life preserver, depending on which colour you're doing. But it doesn't tell you why you choose one of the different colours. It doesn't say uh, use this one for early war and this one for late war or anything like that. So I have no idea 
why there's two different colors or when you'd use them. Um, so I just like the fact that there was a darker color to go against the, the, the light color of the canvas. So I've gone with that. Then you've got the uh, Balkan Cross, which is a, a medal, um, and it tells you to put it there. Um, what it doesn't say is that that should only go on the U9 version. Don't put it on 10, 11, or 12, because only U9 was awarded the medal. So you that was painted on because U9 had been awarded a medal for its actions. Um, or the actions of its crew at least um, so uh, and that was something that carried on on through the war so you only put the the medal on if if you if you, the submarine had been awarded the medal which only u9 was so but it doesn't say that there it's not clear um, so yeah uh, decals are now on but yet another frustration with this kit um, and the more um, so there's our U9 medal, and then we've got our number nine at the front there with our depth marks, and then these are the shorter depth marks at the back, um, and we're nearly ready for final construction of this deck and fitting the deck. Now you'll notice that I have painted in um, some light grey on both of these um, raised areas where the hatches are going to go, um, which is not correct to these instructions. Um, but just like the instructions are wrong for these um, intakes and the exhaust they're wrong there so again the the book that they supplied which isn't a reference manual it just talks about the history clearly shows in the pictures that there is um, light gray on there just like it clearly shows that they're not both gray so um, it's rubbish um, yeah it's really frustrating uh, anyhow, um, I'm not sure how far back they went, whether it was halfway or just the tip. Um, I, I've looked at pictures and I've taken a punt that it's not quite halfway and that it stops at some point just where the, where the hatch is or before the hatch. Um, and I've just done what I think there. It does break up the deck a little bit, so it, I like the fact that it... it it breaks that deck up a little bit and whilst we're talking about painting the deck um, you'll see that um, whilst I painted in this bit where we where we cut the deck and, and filled it um, and I was and I brush painted that I've also gone around and brush painted some panels just to um, give us a, a, a sort of a, pa a different panel look and, and um, make the overall colour a little bit less even. I'm going to start I think by putting the wood deck on and we if you remember had some fit issues with this that we've now resolved and that goes on lovely um, and so I'm going to use a little bit of our contactor friend here and I've not used it for a couple of days, so just going to shove my wire rod down there. Okay. There we go. found when fitting this that lining up the front lug first 
um, is the way to go. There we go, that's on. So, that looks good. So let's just do this hatch, and I just want to test fit it again. So the, the, this has been painted on the outside, but not on the inside. That can be done after it's fitted. The fit of that was quite tight. Yeah. They've not, when they've designed this, I mean, obviously it's a new model, so it's been designed on CAD. They haven't necessarily left any tolerance for glue. And they've not thought about what's your build process what time we're putting this part on will this part be painted first or you know that sort of thing um, increasingly these days manufacturers are showing you this is how you build it and this is a sheet of paint instructions at the end and work out for yourself how you're going to do that which uh, is it just laziness I don't know Just making their life easier, maybe. Not making it easier for the people buying your model, though. There we go. Bit of liquid glue. So that's the hatch in and open. Um, so you, when you look in there, you can see the white of the inside of this, which has got some um, black details on, and then you'll see um this in there so most of what you can see in there um is painted and of course it'll be darker so the other bits are less obvious um but i'm going to whip around with a bit of paint on the inside before we fit it so uh we'll put the mast on last so my next part is this doesn't matter which way around this goes Because it's the same all the way around so I did sand the bottom of that because the fit on that was quite tight so I'll do that slightly differently I'm going to not usually how I put this glue on um, prefer to use capillary action with the uh, extra thin oh, what I can do is just go in from underneath and put a little bit on just in case it uh, flashed off a little bit and there's not much glue there just make sure it's straight so that's that part on and then this part goes on the wood deck there. Now I've sanded this, but I've not test fitted it since. So the fit of this was very, very tight. So I have cleaned this part up a little bit to help with the fit. It's still really tight. So we've scraped all the paint off. So the part fit is just a little tight so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put my correct glasses on so I don't cut my finger that's better we can see what we're doing now so I'm just going to shorten the part by taking a bit of the lug off Um, so the look will be shorter, I should say, not the part. There we go. And I'm wondering if it's a little bit deep, because that looks quite shallow, the recess that goes into. And the, the lug on the bottom, the location pin, if you like, looks a little long. Could be that. 
here. Gonna shorten that as well. Which gives us a little bit of room for some glue. Should be good now. Okay. Right, so the last thing, and then we'll put this to one side while all this glue dries, is the mast. I just want to check the orientation. I think the mast is looks the same from both sides. So um, let's just test fit again. Yeah, that was always a bit on the slacker side. That. So we want a good strong bond with this. So I'm going to use this thicker glue again. So, that is our conning tower almost finished. Right, so I want to get the deck in, and to get the deck in, I've got to get these intakes sorted. So, um, firstly, you'll see that I have now painted these the right way around. want to get this deck on so let's get this into this Gonna need a couple of pegs just to hold that down, I think. So I'm gonna run some glue on the inside edge there and on there. Touch that chimney on the glue. It's a reassuring little click. There we go. In. So we'll give that a few minutes to cure and then we'll come back and 
chuck it into the uh, hull. And then that's the deck in once and for all. Woohoo! Okay, the big moment. Let's get this deck in. So, I'm going to start here at the back. Okay, where's my lid? Lost my lid. Okay, so we'll push this down at the back first. And that just clips in. And then push that down. And then it's slightly tighter fit at the front again. Okay, so I just want to put a couple of clamps on this middle section here. Reassuring creak tells me that I'm putting it together. I still can't find the top for my glue. That's that's distressing me because I know that glue's hardening in the tube. How annoying. Okay. That all seems to be sitting in place nicely. No glue ooze, all good. Make sure that's, uh, that's not quite in place. It's popped out a little bit there. That's back in place now. Don't think it needs any weight. Right. I'm going to let that dry and we'll switch the camera off. I'll come back to you when I can take the clamps off uh, and I'm going to hunt for my top. Okay, so the deck's in um, and I've got a number of um, pre-painted parts that we can now um, fit. So uh, we're going to start with the, there's two little bits that sort of clip the, the front of the hull together. Um, of these bits here um, and I'm just going to test fit the first one. I have test fit them before and they fit really tight. Yeah just clip into place. Um, oh most importantly I did find the top for my uh, for my glue. Um, it rolled off the desk and it hadn't dropped to the floor it landed on a, a little coffee table next to my desk so I checked my desk and it wasn't there, checked the floor and it wasn't there um, and it turned up the last place looked of course right so this is a very tight fit so I'm not putting a lot of glue on this um, at all Go. That's Excellent. So the next thing we can fit is the bow planes. 
I've not actually test fitted these before. My understanding from other videos that I've watched is that these just push into place. One in. Two in. I'll quickly go around the other side. Now you'll notice that, well, some of you will certainly notice that I've painted those different to the instructions. That's what the instructions. Um, say you need to do so they have a a black top same as the deck with a an outline same as the deck in the lighter grey um, and I have looked at lots and lots of photographs everything I can find online plus the material the photographs in the um, history book that they supplied and the only place I can see um, that arrangement of paint with the little um, dark grey tops is in the paint instructions nowhere else so uh, everywhere else that's just a solid light grey on the top one so that's what I've gone with um, so yeah that is the forward bow planes in let's turn this around and have a look at the back end of things So we have a top rudder um, and in the instructions there's two options there's a single and a double and all the photos of the u9 i've seen um, have a double so i've gone with the double i'm guessing some of the other variants had a, a single but again the instructions don't tell you which which one to use so that's the upper rudder in um, now the lower rudder, um, what I've done here is I've painted these with, um, that's the Tamiya, um, I forget the name, the name of it, is it titanium, yeah, titanium silver, um, which I've used as the zinc. Um, now it doesn't tell you in the instructions to do them zinc, um, but I'm assuming these are the um, zinc strips that were put on anti-fouling. Um, I might be wrong, but I like it like that anyway, so it's staying that way. But that was my sort of assumption. Um, that pops in nicely. Not painted some bits of this underneath yet. Okay. Next job. Here's the stern bow planes. Stern bow planes, how does that work? Sometimes this um, thinking, talking, filming malark um, can make you sound like a bit of a prat at times. But what's the right way around for these? So, long bit out. Yeah, the fit of these parts is lovely. I mean, in the main, the fit of this kit has been lovely. Um, it varies from very good to slightly too tight. Where's the all? There we go. So that's that popped in. Uh, and for now, I'm not gluing those in. I'll take a view on whether I need to, but means I can play around and adjust things. Right, now, next thing, um, I've got these little red, you can only be very careful how I describe these. They look like um, 
cloches or something like that the lid on a serving tray something I have no idea what they are I'm sure someone watching this is going to know what they are I, I think they might be vents um, I think the vent covers I think that's a wild guess I have no idea I've seen some quite random suggestions as to what they might be um, but yeah I, I have no idea what they are so if anyone does know please let me know because I'd love to know what they are anyway they are red and bring out an awful lot of colour to this um, monochrome build so I love them Go on like that. So, and they were painted in um, Umbral 60, um, which is the colour suggested in the uh, instructions. There is an orientation to these. They have a little um, pip on the top that needs to run the length of the uh, well, the, the rectangular at the base of the pip. So that rectangular rectangle needs to run in the direction of the about to stern, effectively. Always the last one is a problem. Why doesn't that want to go on? There we go. So that brings some much needed colour to the event. Right, now these are the machine gun legs. I've not actually added the machine gun. And in fact, I've not actually painted the top. I've only painted the bottom. I just wanted to test fit these, see what I think. So I've got two of these, one at the bow, one at the stern. They seem to look okay, so... I think... I want them facing different ways, so it would appear. Right, let me just check the instructions for the orientation of that and then we'll shove that Okay, I uh, now know what I'm doing as much as I ever do. And the forward leg of the tripod faces forward, so on the bow gonna do is face that forward leg backwards okay right I think that is wrapping us up for this video so what I am going to do is I'm going to um, put the conning tower on um, dry fitted and put her in a stand and take some photographs so you can have a look at where we've got to um, and get a good look at what this looks like just stepping back from it for, for a moment um, Thank you very much for staying with this build so far. I know it's, it's had its moments, uh, but it feels like we're coming together now at a bit of, a bit of pace, I'm glad to say. 
and and getting back in its stride so um thanks for looking in stay safe everyone and i hope to see you all again soon